So you join me in my car. We're about to go off and pick up one of my best friends, Lewis Gaskell, and he has no idea what's going on today. Well, he's never actually been to my facility. I've been to his house. We've been out herping, we've been fishing, we've done a few little bits and bobs, but he does that much stuff for everybody else. He's made me a hide, 3D printed me a water bowl. He's always looking up information. Every time I ask him a question, he will put the effort and the energy in to go and find that information for me. But he doesn't just do it to me. He does it to loads of other people as well. And he has had some extremely bad luck and he's had a lot of big names really knocking on him and really putting him down over the internet it's one of the reasons why i absolutely hate facebook it's just so toxic well i'm about to go and pick him up now he has no idea what's going to happen what's going to do anything he just thinks he's coming down to mine to see my animals do a bit of work on a few little projects that me and him have got going over the next few months uh, building up a couple of small enclosures he just thinks we're doing some odds and sods sort of thing he's coming to look at the animals little does he know he's actually going to be going away with one of his dream species i know he absolutely loves this species and good things happen to good people whether you like it or not that's the way it works if you're good to somebody something good can happen back to you to my palace. So guys, this is Lewis Gaskell. Lewis is just a fellow subscriber who's massively knowledgeable. He helps me out all the time with various internet things, whether you want something finding or an animal f information or anything. He's the man to go to for me anyway. Anyway, this is the first time he's been here, so we're gonna show him around in a minute. We've gotta talk through a few plans for these uh, sweet jars because basically me and him have come together on a little project we're working on in the future. Uh, so we've gotta tie up these little um, enclosures in a bit. You want to go around and have a look at a few of the animals? Yeah. Mate. What do you want to see first? Uh, well, we should go with the ambassador, uh, Hugo. Let's go with Hugo. So, this is Hugh. Hugo's gone in his burrow. Oh, well, as soon as I open the door, he's very food orientated, so he'll come out. Let's, oh, there we go. He's coming out, mate. Come on. There we go. So, this is Hugo, the boss monitor. This is how tame he has got. Not a lot of people could do this with their savannah miners. But just let him have a little walk around. If you want, feel free to stroke him. Stay away from his head. And don't wave your fingers like the worms. Try and keep your fingers together. So you know, Lewis here doesn't really have a lot of interaction with reptiles. He is more invertebrate related, aren't you? Yeah. Tell the camera what animals have you actually got in your collection? I your have... collection's not that big, is it? It's working on it. You're yeah, working on it. He's a true hobbyist. <laughs> um, I have a African trained millipede, which I bought as a rescue. They're your dream species, aren't they? No, Colombian dwarf tiger tranche was my dream species. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, fair enough then. Um, but I've got one of them, which I thought was a female, which turned out to be a male. How'd you sex that? Well, basically, you walk down all its legs, and if it's got a gap in its legs, it's a female. If it's one straight all its legs, it's a male. You can check my one later then and see yeah, what you think yeah. on that one. Uh, what else have you got? To, I've got a Asian blue forest scorpion. Blue forest scorpion? Yeah, Hetramanus cyanaris. Cyanara? Yeah. Um, the only true blue. Some people think the Asian, the normal Asian forest is a blue one, but it's not, it's the Malaysian black. Oh, God, and what else have you got? I've got the Hetchmana Simi or Tigerine Scorpion. Oh. I did have a Sea vs. Colour 3 inch, but it recently passed molting. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I've got a 2 inch Mexican Fire Leg or Brachypelma Bone Oh. Um, and I have a Cheap Ultra Brazilian Black, which is one of my Grail species. In all fairness, it's quite a nice little collection, but you do like your tarantulas and scorpions yeah. by the sounds of it. That was a gift, actually, from Scott Simbergs. Oh. Hey! Recently. All right, he's going back in. He's getting nippy. Um, as he would um, But shall we head up and see Popcorn? Yeah, yeah. Go on. So then we've moved up to Popcorn. We're not going to get him out. He got fed just a few days ago, so we're not going to be getting him out. 
But you like snakes, don't you? Yeah. Although yeah. he's got a big invert collection, he's also got a fascination for snakes. And you're getting one soon, aren't you? Hopefully. What is it you're getting? A hypo tangerine uh, Hunderian mount snake. Hypo tangerine hum, Hunderian milkshake. Hun, Hunderian milk snake. So what do they look like? I know what they look like, but I've never seen a hypo tangerines. They're basically black and a luminous orange. And they get better with age. Jesus. Any other species you're looking to get? Uh, eventually, I want to start getting into the um, different localities, the more South African house snakes. That's How many different localities are there? There's quite a few, believe it or not. Work on all that. But we've not really um, experimented it. And you would have thought the Americans are the first ones, you know, to start doing with the morphs. I don't really know but too it, much about morphs. But it was morphs. actually the Australians. So, you know, I personally love normal morphs. Just Oops. how they come out in the wild. Saying that while we're stood next to a Carl Sunglow boa constrictor. Yeah. There is some logic in me madness. Yeah. But I've never really paid too much attention to house snakes. If any of you guys know anything about the localities with house snakes, just stick it in the comment section down below. Also, Lewis is bound to go down also, and read them. Um, it originally started from people collecting them out the wild in South Africa and ah. they started breeding them and that's where the first morphs come and obviously people have interchanged and... It's a bit like that. nerd, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah. amazing some of these, like, these morphs that you do actually see in the wild. High bull ball pythons, you see them out in the wild. Yeah. You don't see them in the wild that often, obviously, because they're a high bull python, but they are a wild morph. Same with um, um, nerd, he's just picked up a king, is it a king cobra? Yeah. Blue cystic. A pure white king cobra, and that come out of the wild as well. Didn't also, it? Um, the first um, T positive albino Burmese came out of the wild. Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. There's so many wild morphs that people don't actually associate with being wild creatures. Like the likes of some of the albino species, they first originally come mm. from the wild. But that's why we've got so many morphs in captivity now also, because of species like that. I've got it. something interesting. Go on. Uh, you know, um, we cystic alligators. Yeah. The first one was found in the wild. Yeah. And the, they're actually at a place in called Alligator Bay in Normandy. In Normandy? Yeah. Uh, is Normandy in Europe? It's in France. So Europe, yeah. I've been. I got to feed them guinea pigs. Because I'm nuts. <laughs> <laughs> There's me thinking I'm all big and bad because I've got a Carlson Globe boa constrictor. No, I've been to Normandy and I've fed a new cystic alligator. I've also wrestled. <laughs> I've also wrestled the West African dwarf crocodile. So we're in the reptile room, as you can tell. Now, he is a tarantula fan, so I was going to run through the three tarantulas over there, but they're all in their burrows. I've got some titty cow um, albi blossoms, if you want to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> why not? Let's have a look at some cow boobs. <laughs> Little does Lewis know, he's actually about to play with the exact tarantula that I'm going to give him at the end of this actual show. <laughs> I can't wait, he has no idea. Yeah then, it's, that's... It's not a bolter, is it? You tell me. I put it down on the base, so if it does bolt, you've got enough space to run. Uh, but just in there, you can take the full lid off if you want. If she does go, we've got plenty of catch cups kicking around. There we go. Has she bolted? No. There she is. You can't really see her very well. It is all in the shade. There well, we go. Yeah, she's amazing. That is the cow boob. The titty cow test. How do you pronounce it? I don't know. <laughs> Go on, try. Give us your best shot. Uh, T I T. So it is tit. Yeah. To to literally cow. I T K A L. I'd say. But you can't say it as spelling, can you? No. So how do you pronounce it? I don't know. Titty cow's the best. Titty cow it is. <laughs> That's what it's called from now on. The cow boob. I'll just take this little opportunity right now to just sort of clarify a little something if you are a bit lost with that last segment. Um, the Brachypalma albipolosum has just had a genus change due to DNA testing on the actual tarantula itself. It's no longer classified as a Brachypalma albipolosum, but a Tlitli cow. To, to, and it's it's only recently changed and everybody is confused on exactly how to say it. So it's just, we're just making a bit of a joke over that. So, guys, put your feet up, sit back. We're going to go podcast style on you for a few minutes. Only a few minutes, so don't click off the video just yet. But we're going to talk about Lewis, his personal experience within the invert sort of community mm -hmm. with having disabilities. Because you do have disabilities. I, yes. I have mental disabilities. Um, you don't have to say anything if you don't want to. I'm quite open about it. We're honest. not. There's going to be some questions here. 
but we're not going to be naming names, okay? Yes. No names. You can be vague, but we've, you've had some troubles within the community, haven't you? Beef, as we call it. Beef, as you call it, yeah. <laughs> um, now, I don't even know where to start this. You've had um, extremely rude remarks from a very big invertebrate breeder in the UK. You could say that. I had to be careful how I worded that so people couldn't exactly know who it was. Um, what was that about? Uh, you wanted a, an animal off him, didn't you? Yeah. What did you want off him? Scorpion. Scorpion off scorpion. Uh, the tiger eat what I've got now. You, you might remember, guys, I had a scorpion uh, in a, a setup. It was classed as an advanced setup because of the heat and light and everything. His setup for his scorpion was exactly the same as that. Maybe a tad little bit too, a tad little bit smaller than mine, but not by much. But what did he say to you? My setup is disgusting. Yeah, uh, he gave you some help for it as well, didn't he? Oh yeah. He really gave him some help, made him feel worthless and stuff like that. And uh, that's one thing. Was that over Facebook? The yes in private message. Yeah, private messages over Facebook. Uh, again, guys, you know my thoughts on Facebook. I can't stand it. And simply because of this. Because me and him are going to go to Doncaster a few times probably throughout this year. And we're going to bump into this person, aren't we? Probably. I bet you he's going to be as nice as pie. Now, me personally, if this person is watching, he might know who he is. Nobody else is going to know who he is because we have kept it extremely vague. I don't have a problem with you, you don't have a problem with me. You two have had a bit of beef in the past, haven't you? And also, guys, you've got to keep in mind we're only hearing one side of the story, so you can't jump to any conclusions or anything. But, what? how did that start? Literally, I just inboxed him and asked him for an animal. That's literally uh, how it happened. I just want to point out as well, this person does sell these invertebrates. This, the, the animal he wanted was up for sale. And he wouldn't sell it to you because... My setup, but he asked to see my setup. Yeah, I said, which is what any good breeder would do. Which I said, This is my setup. I've had loads of people say it's perfect. I've and gone, in my, my knowledge, it was pretty good. I've set it up fully bioactive, yeah. I've gone beyond. I spend loads on my animals, that's why I'm skint. <laughs> yeah, keeping animals in this hobby is exactly the same as cheating on your missus. You're never going to have money. Not that I know what that's Except like, I've but you're never going to have money. Except yeah. I've got the worst three hobbies ever. Yeah. Fishing. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> that's an, I worked out, like, with all my fish dying, I've probably spent over a grand. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite happy with... Um, uh, with <laughs> <laughs> it's an expensive hobby. And then, um, yeah, and God knows, probably about 200 on inverts. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, it's an expensive hobby, especially when you start diving into the enrichment side of the animals, where you, you're providing naturalistic products within the enclosures and having the correct rock placements to get the light and the shade. So, and yeah, it gets mind blowing once you start getting into it, but it does cost an absolute fortune. If, um, what's the good parts for the hobby for you? The Regarding disability wise, does any does it help you or anything like that? Yes and no. Beside with to do with the anxiety side, yes, when you do meet a genuine person <coughs> who like some of them treat you like you're normal and then you get to know them and like uh don't know but they don't treat you any different. And that's what you want, isn't it? Yeah, like yeah. I get that I am different in a way. Mm, this bit kinda of touched a nerve. Cue the rant. Yes, you're I not am. different. Every single person in the world is different. We've all got a different fingerprint. Yeah, We're all yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. You're no different to me. I'm no different to Gandalf. Mm. You know what I mean? We're all different. Yeah, you're yeah. not more different or less different than anybody else. You shouldn't think like that. Yeah, I get that. But like... put it this way: you think you're not as good as anybody else. But I can tell you for a fact: all the stuff you do on the internet, I could never do. Yeah, I get that. But there's like. People single me out because of that, and I've put up with bullying like all my life. So do you know what you do? Get scorpion trained. Train a scorpion to go chase after him. Borrow Hugo, he'll go. Violence right. is not always the answer, though. You're not causing the violence. Scorpion is. <laughs> yeah. Given the younger generation bad ideas here, Richard. 
Uh, <laughs> it's not a bad idea, it's common sense. You go down into like London or somewhere like that, they'll tell you, all right, geezer, just go and bop him. Just, just, yeah. <laughs> I, I get them with smartness, you say. Smartness, go on then, I'll, give me some ideas. I don't know, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's what I, like, you've got to be fast on your feet. Like. A bit like me, I had, when I was an extremely small YouTuber, only 100 subscribers or so, not even 100 I don't think, um, I had one person say, you're never going to do it, you may as well just quit now, blah de blah de blah. I overtook him after about yeah. 18 months and now I'm five times bigger than he is. Yeah. Ha! Yeah. Suck on those apples. <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing like... But this guy went, because you're disabled, you're never going to get gain anything in the fishing hobby. I'm sponsored by three companies yeah. now. Yeah. And, and it, for some reason, companies seem to like it in the fishing, especially the small ones. Um, disabled people, because there's not a lot of like people in the hobby promoting disabilities on the fishing side. But again, is that not you singling yourself out for being disabled? And benefiting yes. from it, so you can't turn yes around. Yes and no, because I'm trying to say to people like, no even matter if you're disabled, no matter you what your disability, do it. you can still do it. If I can do it, you can do it. So the moral of this story is not just for that particular seller, other sellers, other people who are extremely good at a particular species. If you see someone doing something that might be slightly wrong or could be done a little bit better. Don't sit there on your keyboard kicking away loads of abuse. You don't know who that person is on the other end that's receiving those message messages. It could be a disabled person. It could be a multi-millionaire. It could be Donald Trump for all I care. Instead of throwing all that abuse, even if they're ranting on at you all the time, don't throw any abuse. Give them education. Help them out. Yes, mate, right, I'm not going to send you an animal at this exact minute because your setup is not up to the standard that we acquire. If you do this, this and this, it will improve that environment because of this, this and this, and it will be perfectly suitable for me to send you an animal. If you need any other help, feel free to contact me. I'll always help anybody. Be educational, don't be a dick. Just because you've had quite a bit of trouble, I have got this Bracky Palmer, Titty Cow, Albi Palossum, I've got a curly hair tarantula, mate. You can have that. Now, I got it down in seas last year. Uh, it's been through two malts with me. They're an absolute. They used to be called a bracky palmer, but it's nice for everybody to have uh, the new titty cow, the cow boob. And uh, you just have to bad. let me know what's what. You, it's going to need a rehouse soon. But I've been planning on giving it a rehouse, but you're more than happy to have that because I know you've been looking out for a while and. You never know, one day it might even be a handleable tarantula because if you are going to handle tarantulas, I don't advocate handling tarantulas, but that is one that you, you could potentially do it with. Fairly slow moving. Can be a bit bolty sometimes, but fairly slow moving. I'm like you, I like to watch them for the naturalistic behaviour. Same as me. But the only one I possibly handle, which got in birds give me, yeah. is my G Polkra. Oh. Um, Brazilian black. Gra Grandma, Grandma Stola? Yeah. Grandma, yeah. The beautiful there. I, I like these because there's so much uh, controversy going around on whether they're wild caught or whether they've been changed into hobbyist sort of tarantulas. These are captive bred, but still of the wild form, which yeah. are absolutely amazing. They're so rare to find now. They're not by any means an expensive tarantula at all, but you don't keep tarantulas for the price of them. Do you know what I mean? That yeah. is just a beautiful tarantula. I buy what I like, and if I like it, you give it. Yeah, that's the same as me. But that one will grow to about that sort of size. In theory. Oh, not as big as my Brazilian black then. That's eight inch. Is it? Yeah, that's what it's going to get to. Uh, anyway, have fun with that one anyway. Yeah. Shall I say what I'm going to call What are you going to call it? If it's a female, I'm going to call it Miss Titty Cow. <laughs> Miss Titty Cow. What happens if it's a male? <laughs> Sir Titty Cow. Sir Titty Cow. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, guys. So, Lewis is just about to go. We've gave him a little enclosure, because obviously... That tarantula needed an upgrade. He's got some leaf litter, some substrate, loads of bits of cork back for a bit of hide. Uh, so I'm going to head off and get him back, get him gone now. What was the name of your Facebook group again? Um, Exotic Animals Share and Care. Exotic Animals Share and Care. Head over there and uh, have a look.